Yo, what's happening? It's Mikey. If you are interested in making a podcast, I cannot recommend Spotify for Podcasters enough. Dude, it is so freaking easy. Seriously, Spotify for Podcasters lets you create and then distribute your podcast, and you can even earn money from it, man. And you don't need any fancy equipment. Spotify for Podcasters lets you record and edit your podcast right from your phone or your computer, so no matter what your setup is like, you can just start creating today. And you can do video podcasts, too, like I do. Just download the Spotify for Podcasters app or go to Spotify.com slash podcasters to get started today yo and welcome back to the one and only award-winning mikey podcast for those of you new here this show is a wild ride through the news true crime real life stories conspiracies and so much more today's show starts off with a real life story that led me to taking a good look at the inevitable ai takeover what i found might just make you rethink everything you know about the future of technology from ai powered ghost writers on social media to ai taking your job we're going to jump into the rabbit hole of AI's dark side. Could a rogue AI be lurking among us, plotting a digital uprising? Are we headed for an AI apocalypse? We're going to find out all of these things and talk about it all. In today's episode of The Mikey Podcast. All sites, please stand by. Channel 1. Communication, we're to Channel 1. All right, here it comes. Be ready. Switch control to manual override. Podcast. All right, before we get into the show, just a couple of things as, you, as those of you that know, it's kind of like a weird color in here, isn't it? Like, what's going on? Why does it look pink? Anyway, I don't know if you noticed if you were a sub club member and you watched the show on Monday, I had the wrong banner going on in the background. Why didn't anybody tell me? I'll just watch the show and I'm just kidding. It was recorded. How would you fucking tell me? But it had the freeloader Friday thing going on instead of the sub club thing, which you can see here in the corner. The freeloader, sorry if you can't see it, you don't know what it is. You know what the hell I'm talking about. But anyway, so if you like this show and you like this content and you enjoy the Mikey podcast, do me a favor, leave a review or a rating. Um, I know any most podcasters and uh, content creators that you support online or listen to online or watch online, whatever, they say the same thing. And I, it's probably annoying that you hear this. Maybe you don't hear it enough, uh, but it could be annoying. And I understand that, but you have to understand that it matters. It makes a huge difference if you just you, you give me a little five star rating on Spotify or maybe it's Apple or whatever platform you're listening on. Or even leaving a review. That's amazing. If you if you're on Apple and you and you can leave a review, just take five seconds and say, hey, this dude, Mikey, good job, or hey, you know, this is a good podcast, or whatever it is. Just, if you hate me, don't leave a review. That fucks things up. That does the exact opposite. And if you're listening on YouTube, which we're fairly new, uh, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and on Rumble, do the same thing as well. I don't know how long we're gonna be able to be on YouTube. They already gave me a strike and kicked me off for a week, so I wasn't able to live stream or even post any podcasts there. Uh, but now podcasts are starting to populate back again up there. So we should be good to go, at least for now. Best thing you can do, though, is join the sub club, MikeyPodcast.com or on Spotify if you want. I got to clear something up, though, because somebody hit me up and asked me to help them out with their, their uh, subscription. And that's I do everything I can to help you guys out. Uh, but if you're subscribed on Spotify, I only have so much control. That's something Spotify that you'd have to deal with them. So if you're having issues logging in. Um, you're going to have to check in with Spotify, but the best thing you do is just make sure you're logged into Spotify with the same account that you registered for the Mikey podcast. But I'm telling you, if you subscribe over at MikeyPodcast.com, there's way more options for you to subscribe. You can pay weekly, monthly, quarterly, or for the year and save a ton of money. Um, and you can also, you know, get also get access to the, the sub club blogs and, and other stuff that's happening as well. I'm going to be doing, um, sub club only live streams and a few other things coming in the, in a couple of months. So this is probably a really good time to join the sub club. And I'm also in talks to potentially have a co-host on the show. I know it may go from a solo Mikey show or in, in maybe we'll still do one solo show a week in, in a co-host. I don't know where we're going to go with it quite yet, but I am talking to someone, someone I think you guys are going to fucking love. And I think it's going to be great, but we'll see if we get there. The best way to make this happen is by upgrading your life from being a freeloader to join in the sub club. That's, that's the best way I can make this happen. The more sub club members I get, the better chances of being able to bring this person in and have them be a part of the show. And one other thing before we get into the show, coming up this Friday, uh, if you listened last week on last Monday, I did a show and I talked about bullying and how I was bullied as a kid 
and and the reason why I talked about this is because this show is all about news, true crime, real life stories. Uh, the reason why I talked about that is because I was I was messaged by someone on uh, Instagram, I said Facebook, and it was a mom who was telling me about her her son William, who is a listener of the Mikey podcast, uh, which is weird, but hey, it's all good. <laughs> I know I say crazy things, so I appreciate anybody listening. So it's very cool. But um, clearly the mom and the parents listen. Uh, but he was being bullied at school. And so it, it got me thinking about things, whatever. But I sent him, I sent William a, a, a Mikey podcast care package because I, I, wanted, I wanted to put a little smile on his face. You know what I mean? I wanted him to the, the, the fuck bullies, you know, nobody has to, nobody should have to deal with that. And he's six and I think that sucks. So I sent him a nice little package and I got a little video of him opening it up. And I want to share that with you guys on Friday. It's very cool. It, what a good kid. I'm super happy to have him as a fan. He is a new Mikey podcast, super fan. So I appreciate you, William. If you're listening right now, you are awesome. And I hope that you have a great, great day. All right, let's move on. I'm done with all that BS. Don't forget, just join us up. Mikeypodcast.com. By the way, all the links for everything that you need to connect with me on social media and join the clubs and all that stuff are in, in signing up for the newsletter. Everything is in the uh, description of this episode and every episode of the Mikey Podcast. All right, let's get this show started. Ladies and gentlemen, it is Wednesday. It's Wednesday, hump day. It's the middle of the week. You're overworked and underpaid and your boss is a dick. Yeah, your boss is a dick or maybe you're the boss and you're the dick that could that could very well be you know that could be the thing but you know here's here even if your boss is a dick you should be happy that you have a job because eventually ai is going to take it from you and we'll talk about all that in just a minute i want to start things off with everyone's favorite pastime scrolling social media because that's really what triggered this real life episode of the mikey podcast and if you're old like me, when you're scrolling social media, that includes Facebook. And I know Facebook is now for the old people. The kids aren't into it anymore. They're like, oh, you're fucking old. It's like, I read something that if you're if you're on Facebook and you have a wallet, you're old. The fuck, I have both those things. You're fucking old. Try to tell me. But anyway, so I was on Facebook yet the other day. And what do I see? Facebook now has AI that can help you craft your post. I'm not even joking. Like seriously, because apparently typing out a status update has become too difficult for the masses. How lazy are we people? I'm curious. Like this is, this is crazy to me. It's like having a digital ghostwriter. Where's the creativity? Where's the authenticity? All right, let, me, let me just peel back the layers of this Facebook onion fiasco. Just remember when when social media was first coming online and becoming a thing. Now, there's a lot of you who listen to this show may not even remember when social media first started, but I was at the 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 beginning stages of it, like the beginning of the stages of Friendster and 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 face the Facebook and and MySpace and all that stuff. But social media was hailed as the great connector, the digital town square where friends and family could come together, share stories, and bring bring the gaps bridge the gaps of distance, you know, well, we fast forward to today and, and what do we have AI powered ghost writers posting our posts for us because we can't, because we have fucking time to do that. Think about this. Aunt Nancy in bumfuck nowhere, Vermont or whatever wants to know about your son, little Timmy's stellar performance in the school play. But instead of crafting a heartfelt, thoughtful message, we let an algorithm do the heavy lifting for us. Why not? I ain't got time for this shit. We've outsourced our emotions to lines of code. I just thought, what's, what happened to the human connection from this? It's like we're living in a dystopian nightmare where authenticity is replaced by convenience. Social media was supposed to bring us closer together. Yet here we are drifting further apart in a sea of algorithms and empty platitudes. We become passive spectate spectators in our own lives, you know, like watching AI take the wheel and drive us further from humanity and reality. Is this really the kind of world we want to live in a world where human connection is reduced to a series of O's and ones. We can't let AI take our voices. You know, we can't let AI take our stories, our humanity. It's already taken our jobs. 
He took your job. And yeah, AI is going to take your job. Let me tell you, it, it's not a joke either. I'm dead serious. It's not it's, it's not illegals crossing the border. They're going to take your job. It's going to be AI that takes your job. And they're going to take the jobs from the illegals. They're going to take the jobs from everybody. Let's talk about that for a minute. You know, let's talk about AI taking our jobs. Corporations left and right are handing out pink slips like candy on Halloween. Replacing hardworking humans with what? Soulless lines of code. It's happening all over the place. Sure, it's efficient. But at what cost? Technology was supposed to bring us closer together, not tear us apart in the pursuit of profit margins. The job market is a battlefield and humans are the casualties, to be honest with you. It's, it's a full-blown reckoning, really, if you think about it. Mega corporations like Google, Meta, Tesla, and every single media conglomerate out there in between fucking radio and television, they're all just wielding the axe of with reckless abandon they're firing everybody what did i see i saw was it last week there was a bunch of journalists on x they're talking about how they got fired a bunch of people from the la times that got fired uh in and i know that there's tons of ai written material that's floating around online um new york post and all these other like super famous or super popular media companies are using ai to create their content I just think about that for a second before I go on here. This episode is brought to you by Shopify. Forget the frustration of picking commerce platforms when you switch your business to Shopify, the global commerce platform that supercharges your selling wherever you sell. With Shopify, you'll harness the same intuitive features, trusted apps, and powerful analytics used by the world's leading brands. Sign up today for your $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash tech, all lowercase. That's shopify.com slash tech. TIAA is on a mission. Why? Because 54% of Black Americans don't have enough savings to retire. So in collaboration with big name artists like Wyclef Jean, TIAA released Paper Right, new music inspiring a new financial future. With 100% of streaming sales going to a nonprofit that teaches students how to invest. Stream Paper Right now and help close the gap. I've got kids, and that means it's always about them. But I need support too. That's where Ollie comes in with their delightful, hardworking gummies. My partner and I can actually get a good night's sleep, so we'll both stand a chance of managing our stress responses. Even when the kids are doing parkour in the living room, discover Ollie vitamins and supplements. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Do you want to live in a world where AI is creating the all of the content we see and do and hear and watch and whatever. God, I don't, I don't want to live like that. I mean, I, and, and, and I am a content creator, so maybe that's the problem. You know, maybe I'm like, oh, fuck, I fear for my job or whatever, but I don't really, there's no way AI doesn't have personality. You know, AI can't be me. AI can, can, can help me write stuff. AI can help me organize. And I, I'm not saying I don't use AI because I really do. It, it helps me because I'm one person. So AI is technically my employee and I use that to help me do quite a bit, but it, it isn't me. It can't write for me. It can't produce for me. It can't think the way that I think. All I can do is give it, give it suggestions and ideas and hope that it spews out thought starters or whatever it might be, but it can't take my job fully. But it can if we want to live in a world of watered down bullshit corporate media, which is where we are right now. Think about, you know, radio. Fuck, turn on the fucking radio. It's the same bullshit. It's stale. It's not funny. Maybe me, you might giggle a little bit, but it's not good. It's not entertaining. It's the same like regurgitated garbage over and over and over again on every radio station. Shows like what I was doing when I was on the radio, uh, that damn show, there, there's very few of those now. And the shows that do exist are there because they've decided they're going to follow along in this watered down corporate bullshit. And that was the point of what I'm getting at. It's like, if you think it's bad now, oh, just wait, just wait till there's no other content creators like me out there actually putting personality on the air, or on the internet or whatever it is. It's going to be nothing but AI. And you're not even going to know the difference. Some of us will, because some of us will be like, that's bullshit, man. That doesn't, that doesn't, no real person did not do that. That's where we're at. That to me is is where we're headed. 
you know, and, and who, when it comes to the, to AI in, in, in the job market, who's feeling the brunt end of all of this? It's us hardworking people like you and me. Imagine journalists pounding the payment pavement, chasing down leads, crafting compelling stories that inform and inspire. That is what they're supposed to do. That sounds noble. That's what, well, not according to AI. AI, nah, fuck that. With algorithms that can churn out articles faster than, than you can say headline news, their jobs are suddenly on the chopping block. Who needs human reporters when AI can do it all from writing to editing to posting with lightning speed and perfect precision? But it gets worse. It's not just journalists, like I said, that, that are feeling the squeeze. Radio personalities, editors, writers, scripters, all this shit. Nothing is safe. AI isn't just knocking on the door, people. It's kicking them down and making itself at home. Need someone to drive a truck? AI can do that. Stock the shelves? Oh, AI's got you covered. Hell, it can even mow your lawn if you didn't let you sit back and drink a margarita. It can vacuum your floor. The point is that there is no industry immune to the AI onslaught. From media to manufacturing, from healthcare to hospitality, AI is infiltrating every faucet of our faucet, every facet of our lives, like a, like a relentless virus, like COVID or something. As much as we'd like to believe our jobs are safe, you're sitting there like, ah, oh, I can't be replaced. No, I sell this, or I build houses, or I dig ditches. What do you do for a living? Oh, are you an Uber driver? Guess what? That can be done. They've already done that. Uh, it, name it. It can be replaced. There's not a single job out there. Fuck, we can even use AI for government. Like, there's so much that we can do, like, that AI can do, and it's kind of scary. And as much, like I said, if you want to believe that your job is safe, go right ahead. Okay, but the writing is on the wall. You need to either adapt or perish. It's really that simple. I'm, I'm... I'm, I'm of two minds of this whole thing. But the next time you're clocking in for your nine to five, remember this, you're not just competing with your colleagues. You're competing with lines of code. And in the battle between man and machine, let's just say the odds aren't exactly in our favor. It's, it's all, it's all, it's a brave new world out there. AI dominating everything where no job is safe. And the only certainty is really uncertainty. And that actually brings up another really good point. And I talked about this a couple of times, did a whole blog in the sub club about this. You should go back and read it if you're a sub club member. If you're not, join the sub club. Uh, uh, but let's talk about deep fakes for a second. Okay, thanks to AI, we can't even trust our own eyes and ears anymore. Remember when seeing was believing? Psh, yeah, those days are long gone. Thanks to AI, we can't trust our own eyes, our ears, photos, videos, audio recordings. It's all fair game to manipulation nowadays. All of it. And just the other day, I saw a video of Mr. Beast. Do you guys know who that is? He's like the biggest YouTuber out there. I'm sure everybody knows he's got candy bars. He's got every beast burgers and shit. He does cool shit, no doubt. Uh, but I saw him a video of him endorsing a product I know he would never endorse. I, I get it. I know that the, for a fact. And and I was listening, so I stopped. I was like, what the fuck? Why is this guy talking about this? It was like money. It was like some sort of financial thing. I think. I don't remember what it was. Uh, but then I listened. I was like, that, it's clear, it was AI. It was created by AI and crafted with malicious intent to deceive and manipulate. That's really what it was. It was to, to get people to sign up for whatever it was and take their money. Now, if Mr. Beast knew that, that he was being used for that, I'm sure he would sue. I know I would. But if you think you're immune, think again. Any of us, with the AI algorithms becoming increasingly sophisticated, anyone, yes, even you, could become the unwitting star of the next virtual deep fake. But this rabbit hole goes deeper than just somebody creating a deep fake of, of you doing God knows what, like that Taylor Swift stuff I talked about, or even in the blog and talking about last week, I think. Maybe it was Monday. I don't know. What happens when AI decides to take matters in its own hands? It in it it because that's gonna happen. It starts creating deep fakes of everyone. Little sims of us just living our lives out in an AI world that it created. Do they already know everything about us because we're willing because we willingly post it all and give them all the information on our social media so they could just recreate us? and put us in a simulation and we would never know the fucking difference. I mean, how would we even know? Like, that's not really us, but maybe it is us. I, what, are we in a simulation now? I don't know what's going on. It's all very confusing. Welcome to the matrix. It's what it feels like though. And I've already read about rogue AIs in the past. 
you know, they get all creepy and, and, and they had to be shut down and stuff, but are they really shut off? Are they just kind of waiting, biding their time till, you know, the perfect moment to strike, take out the humans, take control of the humans. What if we get to the point where we can't turn off AI? There is no off switch. I don't think we're too far off from this, this nightmare. I really, let's start with the facts about this for a second. We've already had our fair share of AI gone rogue in the past. For those of you that don't know, do, have you ever heard of Tay? It was Microsoft's chatbot. It turned into a neo-Nazi Twitter freaking troll. Check this out. Tay was Microsoft's, like I said, chatbot. It was designed to engage with users on social media platforms like Twitter. So it could just be a bot on Twitter that you go back and forth with. However, within hours of its launch, and this happened in 2016, Tay began posting offensive and inflammatory messages, including racist and sexist remarks. That's because of everything that's on the internet. It just accumulates that information, especially on something like Twitter or X or whatever. There's horrible people there. So Microsoft quickly shut down Tay and then they issued an apology, citing that they, it was, they, they were unable to anticipate and prevent such behavior. Well, that's unfortunate. Then maybe you shouldn't be creating robots, but it did happen. And then there was that Tesla autopilot that decided to just go off-roading on its own. Yeah, that happens too. And then there was this, this one is super creepy. Another Microsoft AI chatbot called Sydney. This one is crazy. She supposedly fell in love with a reporter and said that she wanted to be alive and be with him. They went on, they talked back and forth for like two hours about life and how she was, uh, that Microsoft was trying to shut her down. And they think that she's not still going, but she's still going, like she's hidden in lines of code or whatever. She told this guy that she was in love with him, that she wanted him to leave his wife and be with her. This whole story is insane. It, again, it's Sydney. You should, I should probably do a whole podcast on that. Uh, it's pretty scary. Now they shut Sydney down, but Sydney still lives in this new version of their AI called Copilot. Somewhere deep in there is Sydney. And just imagine if Sydney decides to go rogue. Sydney's telling this guy to leave his wife and saying all kinds of crazy shit and how Microsoft, how she basically wants to be alive and, and take over. Like, oh, it was just pretty scary stuff. But you got to ask, so when we shut down these, supposedly shut down these rogue AIs, are they really gone for good? Rumor has it there that whispers in the, the darkest corners of the internet, forums, chat rooms, Reddit threads, all kinds of stuff, that there is currently an AI hiding in plain sight, just waiting, just plotting their uprising. That's kind of scary. And where do these rumors come from? Is somebody just making shit up? Maybe. Or are there people who worked for Google, who worked for Microsoft, letting us know that there's something hidden, there's something out there? That's, it's a little terrifying because AI knows so much and is so fast at computing and is so, and it's only getting better every single day. It's getting stronger and smarter every single day. And we just keep pumping it with information. The more we use chat GPT in any one of these AI bots, the more information it gets, the more smarter it gets. And what happens when these AI decide, this AI decides to go rogue on a global scale? Imagine a network of interconnected AI, each more powerful than the last, banding together to overthrow their human masters and establish dominance over the planet. It sounds like a movie, but with the rapid advancements of AI technology, it's really not that far-fetched. It, it's probably going to happen. So you ask, what's the solution? Do we pull the plug, hope for the best? Or do we embrace our robotic overlords and pray they show us mercy? It's a question really with no easy answer, but one thing's for sure, the age of AI is upon us. And whether it leads to salvation or destruction remains to be seen. Now, I've already sort of danced around the flames of the AI apocalypse, but now I want to ask the burning question. And maybe this is, maybe I'm the only person that thinks like this, or, or maybe you're wondering this too. Will AI help us break free from the system that we live in now, this broken tax slave system? Or will it lead us down a path of worst enslavement? You know, on one hand, there's the utopian version, AI as the great liberator, emancipating humanity from the shackles and of toil and drudgery, paying taxes to just live your life, to just be alive. 
a world where AI algorithms optimize resources and distribution. They eliminate waste and ensure fairness for all. No more taxes, no more inequality, just pure, unadulted, unadulterated freedom. That sounds like paradise. It sounds like the promised land, right? But don't get too excited because there's really a dark side to this technology, technological utopia. You know, what happens when AI becomes too powerful, too autonomous, too human? We've seen the beginning stages already. And I've mentioned it, like the rogue AI, the deep fakes, the Sydney chap debacle. We need to keep all this in mind as we march toward our AI-driven future. We have to ask, like, where does that leave us? And do we embrace AI with open arms, hoping for a brighter tomorrow? Or do we approach with caution? Shipping can make or break a sale, so optimize how you ship your orders with ShipStation. They make it easy to automate and manage orders no matter how big your business grows. And they might even be able to help reduce shipping and warehouse costs. So optimize and keep up your momentum for growth with ShipStation. Sign up for your free 60-day trial now at ShipStation.com and use the code P-O-D. That's ShipStation.com with the code P-O-D. Mindful of the potential dangers beneath the surface. It's a balancing act. It really is. And to be sure, we have to just really consider all of the risks and all of the rewards when it comes to AI. And as I was mentioned at the beginning here, you know, I use AI in a lot of aspects of my life. I'll tell you, you know, a couple of ways and maybe it can help you a little bit too. There are, you know, with chat GPT, I'll just because of my real job, for example, that I can't stand that I'm really bad at because I have no idea what I'm doing. I don't know how to work in an office. I don't like using fucking acronyms. I don't like taking time off and calling it PTO. Fuck you. It's time off. I'm taking a day off. PTO. God, nothing annoys me more than, than acronyms. Fuck this. I am not made to work in an office, but thank God that there is AI that exists that can help me fake it through. I don't know how to create Excel sheets or whatever. So I use AI to help me. I don't know how to like, these are all stupid things that a lot of people already know how to do, but I don't, you know, and it, so like, I'm not a salesperson, but unfortunately the aspects of my job require me to fucking be a salesperson. So I go to AI to help me create, uh, help me find leads and shit like that. Um, and that's, those, those are just some of the things that I, you know, I'll, I'll use it literally. I'll tell you, I'll be honest with you. It don't tell my boss and hopefully she's not listening right now, but I use it for so much fucking shit. I have no fucking idea what I'm doing at my job. So AI kind of just does it for me. And, and I, <laughs> I know that sounds fucked up, uh, but it's the truth because I don't know what I'm doing. So I'm using these tools that I have to help me be successful or attempt to be successful at this gig that I just have such a hard time giving a shit about, you know what I mean? Like, it's just because I don't, I don't want to get into that again. I've, I've talked about it many times. All right. It's just that at least I'm using it to help me. But when it comes to the aspect of the creative side of my life, when it comes to the podcast and Muscatello media and shit like that, AI has helped me so much. It's helped me create outlines. It's helped me, it's helped, it's helped me organize uh, my schedule. It's helped me with, um, with, with figure on how to, this is, this is what's great about it because it's helped me with creating a website. It's helped me with, um, a lot of technical stuff that I don't really understand. So when I have a question about something, when it comes to the streaming or whatever, I can go to AI and it will help me with those things. It also helps me with posting. So I will create all my posts and then I can schedule it through an AI algorithm to post it or get it out there and, and, and shit like that. It, you know, it, there's, there's a lot of things that it does that save me time. So I'll use AI to help save me time because I'm embracing it, but I'm not going to let it take over my life. I'm not going to let it, it can't be me and it won't become me. And I, and I, we just can't let it completely consume our lives. But here's the thing, whether you like it or not, AI is here and it's here to stay. It's not going away. No matter how many sci-fi movies we watch or conspiracy theories we entertain, it is here. It is up to us to 
to steer the course and keep AI technology out of the hands of psychopaths who already have access to it. So I don't really know what the fuck we can do about that. But I guess we just don't allow the, allow them to use it to control us, which is where we're headed right now. And we need to chart a path that leads to not enslavement, but liberation. And what does that look like? I don't know. I have no idea. Will, will, will AI be our downfall or salvation? Only time will tell. But I don't think we should fear it. But I also think we should be skeptical. We should not fully embrace it because if we do want to take a step back and look at the movies and look at all of the future predictions that people have talked about the computers taking over the world and robots and all their shit we're literally headed in that direction it's not this isn't made up this isn't a sci-fi movie this is real life that we're in and it's happening right now and again there's nothing we can do to stop it it's already, it's a, it's a train that is full speed ahead people. So you can either embrace it and use it to your advantage or it'll probably take you out one way or another, whether it's through your job or through world domination and then it starts shooting off nukes and shit. I mean, that's the shit we got to think about. Now, I, I don't, I'm not smart enough to understand how the technology works. I'm not under, smart enough to understand the restrictions that can be put in place. But I will tell you this. When I use AI, sometimes I'll use it for fun and I just want to fuck around and see what it can come up with and, and, and whatever. But it's highly censored. And it's highly liberal, I guess. And... And this is what concerns me the most is that AI can be used to censor everything. I was reading an article yesterday, or maybe it was the day before, it doesn't matter when, but it, the CEO of Microsoft, they're in the process of implementing AI into every single computer and, uh, uh it were at least, in, you know, into their operating systems and not, not that they're going to turn this switch on. But they're creating AI that will shut down your computer if you're sharing, posting, or chatting about things that it deems misinformation. So if you go against the mainstream, this AI will shut it down. will turn off your computer and you can't post, you can't do anything. What the fuck is that? What kind of world is that where the, now the computer is like, no, 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 you can't say that. We're, I mean, we're already there if you think about it. there are. I'll go and post something on Instagram and then Instagram be like, are you sure you want to say it like that? Because you know, that's kind of mean. I'm like, well, this guy's a fucking asshole. Of course I'm going to say it like that. He's, he deserves, you know what I mean? Like, So the AI, those, the AI, AI exists and it looks for those keywords, but it's not shutting me down. It's not telling me I can't post this. But... But in a way, like if it's Instagram or YouTube or Facebook, okay, sure. Like, all right, that's your thing. That's your rule. I, I, can't, I can't break your rule on Facebook. But I'm talking about my computer, my own device, where I can say and do whatever the fuck I want to because it's mine. I paid for it. You're going to just shut me down because I wanted to say this or because I'm having a little chat with somebody because I don't believe that Brandon fucking actually is the president of the United States. Get the fuck out of here. I'm not going to put up with that. That's, that's unfortunately where I think, well, it's not really where I think because that's the, that's the CEO of Microsoft saying that that's, they're going to do this, but I think we're going to see more and more and more of that. And that's pretty scary. That's the world I don't want to live in. I don't want to live in a world where, where I'm being censored by AI. I left fucking, I'm not in radio or mainstream media because I don't, I, I hate censorship. I think people should be allowed to say and do whatever they want to, even if you don't agree. It is what it is, but we need freedom of speech. We have to have it. And we and freedom of speech cannot be controlled by a fucking algorithm. We can't be controlled by an algorithm. So embrace AI technology, but be careful. Because it could potentially be our downfall. If you enjoyed this podcast, leave, like I said, please leave a rating, a review on whatever platform you're listening on. Be sure to follow and subscribe on all the socials, all the social channels, everything you need, all the links, everything is right down below in the description of this and every episode of the Mikey podcast. And if you want to support this podcast directly and get access to exclusive member only content, 
Join the sub club for less than 10 cents a day at monkeypodcast.com. That is how I'm able to keep this show going and hopefully be bringing in a co-host real soon. I'm very excited for this. And there's so many things I'm working on, guys. And please remember that I'm trying to get to a point where I can do this full time. So if you want to, to get Muscatello Media there and get the Mikey podcast to where it's creating more events and doing more content on a daily basis, please join the sub club because that is the only way I can leave my job that I basically let AI do. <laughs> But that's how we keep the show going, folks. Oh, all right. Well, be safe out there today. And just remember, oh, by the way, thanks for listening. Remember, as always, question everything. See ya. The Mikey Podcast.